All right, everybody. Today we get to ha open uh, perhaps one of the best plastic gin Beyblades, and you're not gonna think what you're not gonna know that this is probably one of the best ones ever used. We have Roller Defense. Roller Defense was such a good Beyblade, you guys, back in the plastic gin era. It. I don't know what it was, but it it just. Other than um. Oh man, that scorpion one used by Eddie where it was just like stupidly round with a big old round disc around it. Other than that one, this one also was pretty good. A lot of people used this and they used um, combos for it. And it just, it tanked a lot of other Beyblades. So let's get into it. And I picked this one up for about eight bucks as well. All right, we've on packaged the bag and here is our contents we got the model sheet and then we've got the logo for roller defense and we have our instruction booklet let's get that bad boy out it's a bit chip protector Oh, did we get three this time? Mm. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, so we get a little sticker sheet for the roller defense. And then we get this off-looking trigger, dude. This thing's pretty wild. Pretty wild. Trigger, kind of like, almost like a human. And then the same... So it's the same bit chip for metal Drasil for roller defense. All right, so let's get to taking the parts apart. We're gonna do this different this time. So like I said, definitely pick up these little um, snips. They're, they're used for Gundam model kits and they're like nine bucks, seven or nine bucks. And you can pick them up at Target. I highly recommend them or Amazon. Um, just because taking these off the little, um, frame sheet is nice because you're not getting, you're not leaving the excess plastic behind from these tabs. And like, literally you guys, that's literally the only excess plastic. So we're going to go ahead and just remove all of them real quick part by part and then we'll go through shave it off real quick and then this bad boy we don't even have to snip off we just press down and it should release we got some screws right there we'll take those out lastly we got this doodad right here we're gonna take that off and we got this other one right here sorry I just realized that uh, I didn't show you guys. So there's two of these. These are the roller balls. Sometimes they're yellow. Sometimes they're blue. I think for Hasbro, they were yellow. Um, but for Takara Tomy, they are blue. And now we are taking off the attack ring. And now... So yeah, the attack ring was just so small, you guys, and so round. Like, look how smooth those slopes are all the way through. Once when I get rid of this, it'll be even smoother. So let me, let me get rid of this real quick. Okay. Okay. We'll just go ahead and uh, lightly score across this just to get rid of all the excess plasticking on all the parts. Man, this really brings me back to my childhood. 
Only then, the only difference between now and then, I wouldn't have used a box knife and snips to take them apart. Okay, the top layer of the spin track is done. Now we have the bit chips. Okay. Okay. And we have our last bit chip. All right. Oh, and we have our roller balls too. You can't really leave those unintended because then they won't work right. Okay. And we have one last roller ball to tidy up real quick, and then we can start putting it together. And then I'll give a brief description why um, everybody, a lot of people back in the day say this was such a good Beyblade. So give me just one second. So we take this and this. So yeah, these roller balls sit just like that, right? You guys might remember it for all you guys who were mainly here for the burst generation. This is very similar to uh, Kinetic Satum or Kinetic Satan or Curse Satan or Curse Satum, whatever one you want to call it. Um, so now let's get our sticker sheet. Well, not our sticker sheet. We do need it, but right now... We just need our instructions. We're gonna put those right there. We can do the stickers though, so let's do those real quick. And I feel like this time, the one that doesn't have the fancy little labeling. Oh, they don't have fancy little labeling this time. Very nice. Okay, there is our Drasil variant. All right there, Drasil with two heads. That thing looks nasty, you guys. And then our Drigger Dude. All right, and there's our Drigger. <clears throat> All right. So we're gonna go ahead and take these screws out now. Maybe. Box knife. And our last screw. Now we are done with the frame sheet. So let's get to putting these roller balls on first. Okay, so it's saying we need a Phillips head screwdriver. So I got my little tech set. I recommend these so much. Like you don't even know how much I recommend this. These little sets are awesome, you guys. They come with everything, like I've said in previous videos. Your tri-wing screw, uh, your tri-wing, your tri-bladed screwdriver head for your burst stuff and your uh, metal fight stuff. I think I even got a triangle one in here somewhere. But yeah, I I even have two sizes for triangle as well. And this was like this was ten dollars at at my um, at Walmart, and I've seen them at local parts stores as well, like lo local hardware stores. So you always wanna make sure that when you do these little screws, these little fine machine screws, that you match up. So this is a little bit bigger than a PZ1, 
screwdriver head, but it'll it'll still work pretty well. So now we just ever so gently lock that into place right there for it real quick. We grab our other one and then we lock that bad boy into place. And we just screw down. I think I might have this upside down. Give me just one second. Yeah, of course I had it upside down. There you go, right orientation. So it's the, the roller ball is supposed to be upside down in the attack ring. And then you just keep going until it's flush like that and you don't want to over tighten it because then it doesn't do the the job that it's supposed to do so you just back it off a little bit and now it'll freely spin okay now we do the same with this one over here so i got to back this one out real quick flip it over now that is a tactic people did use though is they'd flip the roller balls upside down um just because it provides a better spin for those little balls, those little wheels. And they would literally flip them upside down and, you know, get better use out of the gimmick rather than um, keep keeping them right side up. Okay. All right. And our roller defense layer attack ring is done. Yeah, so it, it, I love this ring, you guys. It looks a lot like Dronzer S and Dronzer F. Um, definitely pretty cool. So let's get it stickered real quick. And this is very this is one of the very few that actually used screws to get the job done. Cuz you had Drasil that used screws, jumping base, and there was a few others, but a lot of them used the little spin track. And I think there was a Drigger at one point in time that used screws as well. Okay, and then here's our first sticker. Sorry guys, I'm not the best at stickering. Okay, and here's our second sticker. Now we put on the roller sticker. And we have one more roller sticker to put on. And there we go. So here is the outer edge of the attack ring. Now we just put the little eyelets on. Okay. 
which those little eyelets, the white part of the eyelet is shown to face outside of the attack ring. So that's how we're going to place it. Okay. And then we got one last one. Sorry guys, like I said, I'm not the best at stickering here. Okay, so now we have our roller layer. So like I was saying, with the roller layer, it's very small and compact and the gimmick with the roller balls actually kind of tend to work. And with what, what, like I said, with what a lot of people did too, is they flip these roller balls upside down before it was considered, uh, you know, modifying your bay, <laughs> a modification. Um, it was just considered an alternate form of a gimmick and they were doing that and were winning matches. And then of course they'd use like different spin tracks and stuff like that. So this spin track, like I said, is one of the very few that are unique that uses um that uses a screw we put the cap right here and now we take our other screw and our screwdriver and we just screw that into place And because roller defense is a right spin, we will put, I have another right spin st uh, sticker that I'm going to use from my metal Drasil sticker sheet. So we will put a right spin sticker on it. There's one. And two. And there we go. Our right spin, spin track. Now then we have a solid weight, which this really does, this one really doesn't matter because there's not a hole on, it's not hollowed out on one side. So we, then put, well, we got to put the bit chip in place first. Just because it's roller defense, we'll put it on here. Then we'll do the metal Drasil. Well, the Drasil variant. Oh, this bit chip's thick. There we go. Perfect. And fits right at home. Now... We tighten her up, put her in place, and there is our roller defense. Very nice. And we even got the little trigger dude done too. All right, so now let's do a test spin. So yeah, like I said, you know, these balls, they would put upside down because you'd still be able to use it upside down and they would actually protrude out a little bit more because they'd be off balance. And um, the gimmick would actually work a lot better. And that was a tactic people used <clears throat> for roller defense. All right, three, two, one. Let it rip. All right. Now let's do a test battle. Let's do Dronzer V2. Three, two, one. Ah, of course. Launcher jam. Sorry, guys. These old launchers, I swear. Okay, let's launch this again. Three, two, one. It's definitely hard to do this with one launcher. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm trying to figure out why my launcher keeps jamming. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Three, two, one. Let it rip. Sorry, it's not working that well. All right. So, why don't we bend you this way? I gotta say though, that was a big problem with these um, plastic gen launchers is the, um, the rip cord would actually jam up in the launcher. Let it rip. It's just a shame we didn't get um, any string launchers. Well, we got one string launcher, but it was just not really what you thought. And there you go, roller defense win. All right, now let's do another battle real quick. I have to take this launcher apart and figure out why it's doing this. There we go. All right, we'll do metal Drasil now. Three, two, one. Nice. Okay, let's go again real quick. Three, two, one. Got some heat on that roller defense. Metal just seal knocked off balance. And roller defense. Very nice. And then our last the last one we unboxed, we'll do Dronzer Knight now. Three, two, one. And roller defense with a ring out finish. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Yeah, so like I said, roller defense was just a super small Beyblade that just can pack a little bit of a punch. Um, especially if you use bigger discs on it, it packs a huge punch. Um, and it's good at deflecting attacks as well. So with that being said, you guys, this will finish up the video on roller defense. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a little bit longer than what I and would have liked, but it is what it is. So yeah, roller defense. Thank you for the comments, likes, and subscribes. And as always, three, two, one, let it rip. Have a great day.